Deep inside this mountain, there hides a remarkable secret. Here, immense power is created by nothing more than water. When millions of people in the UK watch the same TV programme, be that an Olympic final, a World Cup, a rugby or football match, a remarkable event called a TV pickup can occur. At the end of the programme, many of us switch on our kettles, taking it for granted that the power will be there. But where will that sudden surge in electricity come from? Nuclear coal and gas-fired power stations cannot start that quickly, and power generated from wind is unpredictable. So what's the answer? Well, it's here inside Electric Mountain, which houses one of the world's largest pump storage hydroelectric power stations. When engineers were looking for somewhere suitable for this project, they found high above lakes Padarn and Peris at the top of Mynedelidir, Le Marchlin Maur, a natural source of potential energy. This became the power station's upper reservoir. Here, the water is stored that makes the turbines turn. At the push of a button, the water can be released into the system, creating enough electricity to power a large city. When the Dinorweg quarry closed in 1969, it left deep scars on the mountain and tons of debris in the surrounding area. Some of this quarry debris was used to construct the lower dam at Llyn Peris, while the caverns that would eventually house the station were blasted and excavated from deep underground. At its peak, the Dinorwe quarry was the second largest in the world, employing around 3,000 men. By the late 60s, slate quarrying was a dying industry. After the quarry's closure, there rose a new project to build the Norwich Power Station. During construction, over 2,500 people were employed by 33 companies. Between commissioning in 1974 and the official opening in May 1984, a staggering two million cubic meters of rock had been excavated. The scale of the project has cemented its place in history as one of the most significant construction projects the nation has ever seen. So now we know where it is and how it came about. Let us show you exactly what was created inside Manith Elidirvaur. As we travel nearly 500 meters into the heart of the mountain and into the power station itself, you'll notice that this isn't some small track, but a proper two-way road with its own traffic light system. In all, there are 16 kilometers of tunnels that have been drilled or blasted into this mountain. In fact, if you were to strip away the floors of the main machine hall, it could accommodate St. Paul's Cathedral. You might well believe that you had stumbled into the world of Doctor Who, but these are the main inlet valves, six in all, each linked to one of the Norwegian giant generating units. They are among the largest of their kind ever built. Once given the instruction to start the generating, each valve can swing open in about six seconds, releasing the equivalent of up to one and a half million cups of tea per second into the system. Inside each valve, there are huge ball mechanisms controlled by the enormous 16-ton yellow counterweights. Despite the massive volume of water rushing through each valve, the counterweights are able to shut off the flow in as little as 20 seconds. When the water is released, it is directed towards and through the turbines via a spiral casing which gets smaller and smaller in diameter, thus creating enormous pressure with which to drive the turbines at up to 500 revolutions per minute. A conventional thermal power station can take as much as 12 hours to get up to speed. Even a station on standby will take at least 45 minutes to get to full capacity. The Norway, on the other hand, is unique in that it can be supplying power not within minutes, but within seconds. It can go from zero power to full power in only 12 seconds, making it one of the fastest acting power stations in the world. The turbine generators in most power stations are installed horizontally and take up enormous floor space. At the Norway, they stand vertically. 
Each turbine is connected via a vertical shaft to its own generator. And as the water begins to turn the turbine, the shaft rotates the generator's huge central rotor, creating the electricity for instant delivery into our homes and businesses. Instructions are received from the national grid and power is generated instantly, in large part due to the position of the upper reservoir, Marchlin Maur. On a daily basis, the level can drop as much as 37 meters, as 7.6 million cubic meters of water from the reservoir are available to drop some 568 meters, nearly twice the height of the Empire State Building, and travel over two kilometers into the lower Llyn Peris. By the time the water has emerged from the power station, it could have helped to generate up to 1.7 gigawatts of power. Of course, once the stored water has been released, it needs to get back up to Marchlin Maur so that its availability to generate can be re-established. This is done at night time when there is no great demand for electricity. The plant is simply put into reverse. The generator becomes a motor and all the water that has come down during the day is pumped back through the system using the same turbines as pumps, this time turning anti-clockwise. Simple and brilliant at the same time. It is astonishing to think that this huge complex exists and yet is not visible to the naked eye. A simple idea that became a brilliant reality. Its role in the future as we move towards a low carbon electricity system is assured. It will continue to meet the rapid surges in demand that we require as well as providing the necessary backup when the wind does not blow. So, join us as we travel deep into the mountain that houses the Norwegian power station, the Electric Mountain.